The history of the drive towards cleaner, greener forms of transportation is littered with the names of companies that have tried and ultimately failed to get everyone switching away from fossil fuels and onto lower and zero emission alternatives. And of course, in recent years, it's been dominated by one company in particular, a company that didn't just succeed where countless others failed, but has become so successful that its value now eclipses that of so-called traditional automakers like Ford, General Motors and Fiat Chrysler. I am, of course, talking about Tesla, a company which, in its 17-year history, has gone from being a startup promising a sexy, sleek electric roadster to one which puts fear into the hearts of the old guard of the petroleum industry, one which offers four different vehicles for sale and, as we reported last week, has become so valuable on the stock market that it's executing a five-for-one stock split next week. The success of Tesla, despite the poor fates of companies like Coda, Byton and many, many others before them, has prompted other companies to try and follow in Tesla's tyre tracks. And while Tesla's original foray onto the stock market took place at a time in history where Tesla's financials were far from rosy and there was much uncertainty about the company's future, which, come to think of it, is something we tend to forget to mention today, the success it's had since and the massive rise in its stock valuation has, I'm sure, been the reason that many new electric startup companies exist and are trying to get on the stock market. The desire to be the next Tesla or to beat Tesla is really strong. The result? Plenty of new startups eagerly throwing themselves at the stock market in an attempt to gain much needed investment, each on the lookout for their own piece of Tesla success or for those who've not yet decided to trade publicly yet, getting massive private funding rounds often spearheaded by companies that once backed Tesla, not to mention large multinational mega firms who traditionally had never been interested in automotive companies, but for now, for whatever reason, see a real value in being in at the ground floor of the transportation world as it reinvents itself. Away from large institutional investors, the stock market and everyone on it, from day traders through to massive pension fund managers, are looking to invest in something that will give them a good rate of return. And in looking at how well Tesla has done, that means those investors are willing to throw money at any company that's making cleaner, greener forms of transportation and energy. Sometimes the companies being invested in have products to show for it. Think about privately traded Rivian, for example, which has received massive investment from names like T. Rowe Price, Amazon and Ford. And then there's the similarly privately owned Lucid, a firm that received more than $1.3 billion in investment from the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund in order to continue the development and push to market for its Lucid Air sedan, a car which we're going to see in production form very soon. These companies have a good chance of making it to market. They already have plenty to show for it, too, including production lines that are in pre-production preparation, in the case of Rivian, or in the case of Lucid, finishing construction. Then there are companies that, without anything to really show for it, other than a few prototypes and lots of hearsay and rumours behind the scenes, have crazy valuations. These are engaging in what seems to be a worrying precedent in the startup clean vehicle world. Reverse mergers. Once complete, these companies, which have yet to bring new vehicles to market, are suddenly on the stock market and able to benefit from all of the things that come from being a publicly traded company, which normally, in this case, means gaining additional funds from stock sales and valuations, plus other perks that I'll come to. But what is a reverse merger and why are companies like Nikola, Lordstown and, as announced this week, Canoe rushing to join the stock market using just this technique? And what does it tell us about these companies and their future? Before I get into the weeds too much, I should give you two disclaimers. First, I am not a stock trader nor an advisor nor do I purport to play either on YouTube. I'm not liable for any financial decisions you make as a consequence of watching this video. And this video is most definitely for informational purposes only. Always consult with a qualified financial advisor prior to making any financial decisions. Second, I am not an expert in this, so I might get stuff wrong. And believe me, there are entire firms of people who specialize in the various IPOs and reverse merger routes to the stock market. 
I'm just giving you a layperson's basic fact perception here. In order to explain what a reverse merger is, let's look at the other way that most companies go public first, an initial public offering. During an IPO, a previously privately held company sells its shares on the stock market for the first time and gets its official stock ticker. But getting to that point is a lengthy and complicated process. Most companies that go from being private to public through an IPO have a private valuation in the ballpark of around 1 billion US dollars, aka unicorn status. They've done so well so far on the back of private investment in angel investors, but now they're ready to take advantage of things that becoming a publicly traded company can offer, such as further funding expansion through the sale of debt, attracting a higher level of investment, and making security-backed loans with large banks and institutions. Finally, being a publicly traded company makes it easier for startups with limited cash flow to use stock options as part of their employment contracts and bonuses. If your employees are doing well but you don't want to pay them a huge cash bonus, you can give them the option to buy stock at a preferential rate in the future instead. This is genius, especially as such options usually encourage staff to stick around and work even harder to ensure that the company does well and thus their stock becomes worth more. In order to get to that point though, there is a metric butt-ton of paperwork that has to be done. The company has to undergo underwriting to make sure that its books are in order, to make sure that it's not doing anything illegal or hasn't in the past. It has to go through verification to make sure that its valuation is actually reasonable and not a completely made up one. It's also to establish a reasonable expectation as to what its initial share price should be. I am completely simplifying things here, but suffice to say that the process of going through an IPO is lengthy and it can take months. The company has to first start with expressing its interest in becoming publicly traded. It also has to go through all of the steps I've already listed, as well as establish a board of directors whose job it is to act as intermediaries between the company's management and its shareholders. And there are many, many regulations which have to be complied with. And yes, while an IPO can technically be carried out without any underwriting, these IPOs are often frowned on by investors as they usually carry substantially higher risk than underwritten IPOs. Tesla went through an underwritten IPO a decade ago this October, trading initially at $17 per share or thereabouts. Today, as I film this script, its share price is worth nearly $1,900 per share. That's the IPO. But what about a reverse merger? Well, unlike a merger where a valuable company acquires a smaller company that has something it wants, like intellectual property, a skill, knowledge, or perhaps a particular strategic position in the marketplace, a reverse merger is what happens when a privately owned company buys shares in a publicly traded firm in order to gain access to the stock market. This usually takes place as follows. A company that's publicly traded one which had maybe hit hard times and seen its once great stock valuation tumble to be worth a few cents per share, is acquired wholesale by a company that either has enough money to buy the stock outright or to execute a one-for-one -one share swap where both companies essentially own each other and therefore merge. Company A, the publicly traded one, becomes owned by the privately held company and vice versa. The two firms merge to form a new firm. That new firm gets a new name and usually a new stock market symbol. Sometimes the publicly traded company isn't one that's actually hit on hard times, but rather a company founded specifically to help raise money in order to help another company get onto the stock market through this back door. These companies, known as special purpose acquisition companies and colloquially known quite fairly as blank check companies, are pretty weird. They often have large amounts of backing hidden away through their own IPO, usually in the form of money stored in an interest-bearing account, and they have a limited number of months or years to complete the acquisition of a startup before they'll ultimately close. They're often formed with a specific intent of helping a new startup get onto the stock market without going through lengthy IPO underwriting. This process is entirely legal. But unlike IPOs, which are lengthy and complicated and have a lot of red tape, reverse mergers are essentially a backdoor to the stock market. There's far less paperwork to complete, and yes, 
while lawyers from both firms still have to do all the due diligence to make sure there's no liabilities or nasties hiding in the closets, the actual reverse merger can take as long as it takes the lawyers to draft and complete the paperwork. <laughs> that can be less than a month. With newly merged companies now acting as one and shares already available, not to mention a previous share history, the new company can trade immediately. It doesn't require a valuation from an underwriting firm, since the original public firm was technically already trading at the time of the reverse merger. Yet it can give companies with far less resources and backing the opportunity to benefit from all of the stock market hype. In the case of Nikola Motor, a company that has yet to produce a single vehicle, it means that it can enjoy seeing its stock price soar every time the company announces a new product or the CEO says there are more reservations. And it means the company can now borrow heavily on the promise of its future vehicles, both from private means and from the sale of bonds and other credit debt financing. In short, it's essentially a legal way to play the regulations to get access to all of the stuff that IPO'd companies have without going through half as much hassle. The downside? While there is kudos to being a publicly traded company and there's definitely more capital available to exploit, well, if you don't do so well, the stock market will very quickly spit you out again. And for investors, there is a whole lot more risk that you will get that with a company that entered through a backdoor method like a reverse merger than through a conventional IPO. And as Elon Musk has very famously bemoaned, the SEC and Wall Street are tough to deal with. Instead of executing long-term plans that take years to carry out, there's a drive to perform every quarter for the stock report, and that can be draining for employees, soul-destroying for executives, and ultimately lead to a company's failure. Sure, Nikola, Lordstown, and now Canoe can get to benefit from the bubble that is clearly building in the clean vehicle world, but without a solid foundation, they may just as quickly go away should that bubble burst. And I think they might. That's it for today's video. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. And you can support us using the links below, which now include Ko-fi, Patreon and Bitcoin. Don't forget too that you can chat with the team and other Transport Evolved fans for free by joining our Discord chat room. And if you are a Patreon supporter, you'll automatically get access to Patreon only rooms when you join Discord. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Thanks go to Jeffrey Songs, to John Lyons and Ray Jean Fellows. They are our self-driving patrons. And special thanks to our Starman level patrons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea. If you are looking for something else to enjoy from this channel, then Google's algorithm thinks you should check this one out. So if you haven't watched it already, you might want to do that next. And I'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe, wear a mask when you're out and about, and work to become a better kind of person. Strive for equality, speak out against injustices and bullies, strive for truth, and treat others as you yourself would like to be treated. Be that change. And if you are a US citizen who is eligible to vote this November, please do make sure you're registered to vote. I don't care who you vote for. Exercising your democratic right to actively have a say in your country is very important. And the same goes for anyone anywhere else in the world with elections coming up. Thanks for joining me and until next time, keep evolving.